through as many of them as I possibly can but I have another guest to talk to now and that is Fiona Looney. Fiona is a newspaper and broadcasting columnist and media personality. She's also a playwright and a scriptwriter, uh, and she recently travelled to Uganda with World Vision. You're very welcome to the programme uh, Fiona. Thanks very much Maria. Now, what, what, why did you go to Uganda, Uganda rather and what does World Vision do there? So I, I need I need to take you back um, twenty years, but don't worry, I won't take twenty <laughs> years to tell the story. Um, so I started sponsoring children with World Vision Ireland about twenty years ago. Uh, it was actually, funnily enough, I it was when I had my my first play, Dandelions, which had done quite well, and I was talking to Pauline Midlin, who was the star of that, who's a good friend of mine, one day. And I said, I really probably should give some something back from the proceeds of this. And she uh, she told me that she was sponsoring a child with World Vision. And that's how I was introduced to it. Um, and I've done that over the years. And uh, I have to say, I wouldn't be the most diligent child sponsor, to put it mildly, you know. So I set up the direct evidence and sort of promptly forgot about it. But every year you get birthday cards you know, to write to the child and you get school reports. So, you you, are, you know, they do keep you in touch with, the, with mm. the, the children you sponsor. And then last year, World Vision got on to me and said, would you like to go and actually meet your sponsored child? Um, which frightened the life out of me, to be honest. <laughs> because Partly because I kind of thought, does he really exist? And I'm sure a lot of people who sponsor children in Africa probably have this notion that, ah, oh, yeah, it's just a picture of, you know, yeah. it's a picture on the troker box. You know, it's kind of, it doesn't filter down. Um, but I'm here to tell you it filters down. In fact, when I did meet John, the little boy I sponsor, um, to my mortification, he was holding a birthday card, which I had written at my kitchen table last March. And I'd spent about five seconds writing it. Aww. And they do say, you know, draw a picture or, you know, attach a photograph and tell John about your life. And I think I'd said, like, happy birthday, John, from your friend in Ireland. Boom, five seconds into the post. And he had it in his hand. And I'm going, oh, my God, I can't believe he actually gets the card. But they do get the card. So they brought me over to see what they're doing in Uganda. And then on the last day, I met this absolutely just gorgeous little boy who was just uh, like, I mean, he was a wonderful child in a wonderful village. But to give you an idea of how, I suppose, otherworldly it is for us here in Ireland, um, you know, we the village that John lives in, we were the first white people that have ever been in his village. Good. And so, you know, he, so essentially, you know, I took his hand and mine was the first white hand he's touched. Mine was the first white face he's seen. I'm sure he was massively disappointed, <laughs> but he hit it very well. Um, so it was amazing. So World Vision, what they do with the child sponsorship over there is, so, you know, it's amazing what you can do. A little to us means so much over there. So I, I pay 25 euros a month uh, for this sponsorship. I have to be honest, I never notice it going out of the bank. Um, you know, I'll kind of work make sure there's money in the bank, it gets paid. I don't think of it. But what they do with that money over there is really priceless. And I, I learned very much the power of one because I was kind of going, well, 25 quid a month can't make that much difference. But if everyone thought like that, then there would be no 20, no collective 25 euros. Mm. And what they actually do is they, they channel these funds into what they call area programs. So... World Vision go into very, very vulnerable, extremely poor area areas, and they that they will identify a village or a, a series of villages, and they basically go into them and they say, okay, we are going to show you how to be self sufficient. We're going to show you better farming methods. We're going to show you how to build better houses how to cook more efficiently. Now, bear in mind, these people have no electricity, they've no running water, they've no sanitation. Uh, you know, it's really, really basic what they have over there. But World Vision have all these ingenious kind of programs that, you know, it, it, it's not, they don't come in and say, we're going to bring you electrification. They go in and say, we're going to teach you a better way mm. to cook your food using less firewood, you know, and 
and more robust clay ovens. So, like, it's fascinating what they actually do. So the money that, that we give goes into these these projects and the sponsored children then, you know, there would be one or two in each village and they kind of become, oh, certainly when we were there, they become sort of the poster boys and girls for, for these groups of people because the money raises all boats. You know, it doesn't go, I, like, you know, John does not get 25 euros into his pocket every yeah. month from me. It goes into the community and the work they do with it. It's, it's phenomenal, you know, like it, just to see, you know, one of the things we saw when we were there was in the fields and um, because most of them are subsistence farmers. So they're teaching them because obviously through climate change, the rainy seasons are becoming much less predictable in Africa. And they're teaching them how to put furrows in their, you know, in their crops and line them with straw so that when the rains do come, it actually holds the water better and it absorbs into the ground in a, in a slower way, gets deeper, so that during the prolonged dry seasons, there is more moisture in the ground. Like, it's very simple, um, but it makes a big difference. And then, you know, they, they empower them to, to do group saving schemes and to they teach them how to deal with government so that they can apply for funding and they can negotiate you know, planning and all these sort of capital projects so that once World Vision leaves, and this is one of the reasons I was attracted to World Vision, is they go in and they say, we're going to do all this and then we are going to leave. We will empower you and Mm. then we will leave. And it's really interesting to see and they are completely true to that. So they stay for 10 to 15 years and they leave these communities in Listen, by our standards, we would still call them very poor, but they are not as vulnerable as they were. You know, they are not as poor as they were. So it's amazing to see it. And it's amazing to bring first world eyes and especially mine, because I would lead a fairly kind of, you know, just like, you know, I just sit at the kitchen table and write jokes all day. You know, like I'm not Mother Teresa. Mm. I don't kind of you know, stare out the window and contemplate the dark continent, you know, like, you know, in a way I'm kind of the worst person, you know, in a way to bring out there. But at the same time, for somebody like me to see, I suppose, how the other half lives, to pull the cliche up, you know, it is astonishing. And to see what's possible in a situation that you would, you would go into and you would think, this is hopeless. I cannot make a difference. You know, I am one person I've no skill set that's relevant here. I don't understand the language, you know, like, and I don't have a lot of money. How can I make a difference? But when you see the difference it makes, it is astonishing. And one of the things when we were out there, that the story that really moved me, and actually, I mean, I was close to tears a number of times, but when we went into John's village, and his parents, and they kind of throw a little party, like it's it's mortifying, but also lovely. And uh, they were talking, you know, everyone made a little speech, and John's mother made a speech where she thanked me personally and said, you know, you're great, and I'm sitting there absolutely embarrassed about this and mortified and thinking, really, I do nothing, I barely wrote the birthday card and all this. And she told the story that when World Vision first went to her family and said, will you put your youngest child forward to be a sponsored child? She went and she got a book and she produced the book when she was talking to me and it was a Bible. And she said that she brought this book to World Vision and she said, I want my son, John, to go into this program because I never learned to read and write. And I really want to be able to understand this book. Mm. And through World Vision Child Sponsorship, John is going to school. He is learning to read and write. And she said, I want my child to be able to read this with me and help me read it. And when she said that, I'm actually getting choked, even thinking of it, you know, again, Mm. you just realize, my God, you know, that is everything to these people. You know, it's nothing to us and it's everything to them. When when you got home, Fiona, did you feel a little bit like Tom Hanks in Castaway when he got home? Like the amount of like stuff that we have and the amount of stuff that we waste and yeah. like how the people that you'd come from 
would never see anything like that and would tre- treasure yeah. like a card that you wrote in five seconds at your kitchen table yeah. as a prized possession yeah, of his to show you. Did it make make you feel like that? I came home, yeah, it's absolutely you put on the immersion. So I had no hot water for a shower and I was nearly losing my mind. And then you kind of go, like, these people have no water. Like, there's not kind of mm. hot water coming out of a shower. So I kind of, I, so I basically, I, I, I shut up and had a cold shower and was very glad of it. Um, I have to say that doesn't last very long. Or certainly it didn't for me. Maybe I'm just a very superficial person, but it really only lasted a few days. And I'm, I'm only back about two weeks, but it really only lasted a few days because, and, you know, it's interesting, like a lot of people said, you know, did go, did going to Africa as a child sponsor change your life? And what I would say is, no, it doesn't change your life. But what you, what you realize when you go out there is it changes lives over there. And, you know, and in a way you can be very grateful then for the stuff we have. And rather than kind of going, oh, you know, like we're throwing stuff away and we're this, you know, we're wasteful and we're doing this and we're doing that. I think I felt gratitude that we have that life. And I will say as well, one of the things over there, you know, like we beat ourselves up a lot in Ireland. You know, we get a lot of things wrong, you know, housing, you know, like all these, you know, health, like we have a lot of problems. But when you go, like a thing I didn't realize going into Uganda, Ireland is the only country in the world that doesn't need a visa to travel into Uganda. And that's in recognition of the amount of aid that we have given over the years, starting with obviously the the foreign missions, as we used to call it, but going right up to current times. And when you're out there in these very vulnerable, very deprived areas, you see the evidence of Irish aid everywhere. You know, you'd be looking at at like, you know, a a water station and you'll see, you know, like built a plaque that says built with the assistance of Irish aid or built the assistance of Bank of Ireland and various private companies. And then World Vision Ireland obviously is very, very, you know, kind of obvious out there as well. So I think as Irish people, you know, we've always punched above our weight when it comes to international aid. And we have an absolutely fantastic reputation. You know, one of the things that amazed me was the people in Uganda, like they, they, they haven't the first notion about Ireland. They know it's very far away. They were asking lots of questions about, like, you know, how long are the days? How cold is the weather? How do you eat chicken if you don't have chicken running around your feet? They've no concept of refrigeration. Um, uh, But the biggest question they have, because they are really puzzled, is why? Why do we give money to people that in all likelihood we will never meet, we will never see, we will never communicate with? And they really are baffled by that. And it's a lovely thing. It's a great tribute to us that this is the reputation. Like, I think we're mad, mad, basically, for doing this. But really good mad. Are you hoping that other people will do this now by by talking about it, Fiona? Like, can yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. And you know, and and people who want to sponsor a child, if you go go to the World Vision website, worldvision.ie, you know, it's very very easy. And you know, what I would say is, you know, you don't need to be a do-gooder. You don't need to have you know a massive amount of money. You know, it's not kind of. You don't need to build a hospital. Like 25 euros a month makes a a life, it actually makes a life-changing difference over there. And if you're in a position, and I know obviously times are hard here, I know the cost of living crisis is escalating, and I know most people do not have 25 euros a month. But for those who do, it's just something that, do you know, it's just a way of connecting with somebody in the world who is just has such a different experience of life, and they they have a good life there. I mean, they're not unhappy, they're, and they're not malnourished. And gives the kids a, a chance. Very, exactly, it gives the kids a chance to go to school. It gives them a chance to just improve their lives for the whole community. And you know, it's really like when you see the differences. You know, we saw World Vision has built a, a, a fairly basic piped water system. That now, so now there are public taps in these areas mm-hmm. instead of 
people having to walk 12 kilometres to get water every day. And, you know, when you see the difference that makes to clean water in in taps in the villages, um, that is huge. And I will say, I started, one of the reasons I started doing this was my kids at the time were quite young. And I chose, you can choose the child you sponsor, you know, like you, you can select. I mean, I know it sounds a bit like Tinder, but they're lovely. You know, they really are. They're all gorgeous children. And I chose children who were the same age as my children. Yeah. And, you know, when the school reports used to come in for my kids when they were younger, like I would always have my own kids and the child in Tanzania or in Uganda, their report would also be on the fridge. And it's a great, I have to say as a parent, it's a great way for, you know, when you get that. But, you know, that's not fair. Why can't I go to Disneyland again? You just refer them to the fridge, refer them to the photographs that you get of the children. And it is a great way for kids to just realise, A, how lucky we are over here. But B, how you can actually contribute to somebody, how you can make Make a difference difference, to somebody's life thousands of miles away. Okay, Fiona, thanks a million for talking to me. And the, the next b- birthday card you. you write now, sit down and put a bit of effort into it, right? Oh, listen, the next one's having a novel in it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a million. I enjoyed the chat. Thanks a lot, Maria. Bye-bye. Thank you. That's uh, Fiona Looney there. And World Vision is uh, the organization that she's talking about. It might be something you want to look into if you're in a position to do to do so. And I'll be